What's going on everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands On Auto Training. We got ourselves a 2009 Silverado. I want to take you along for showing you what I found. We had a no crank, no start situation. And when I first had gotten into it, uh, we did not have a Prindle. I did a complete vehicle DTC scan with the Tech 2 and everything on pin 1 of the DLC was not communicating. So just so you guys know, pin 1 of the DLC is our low speed communication network. And uh, I actually put my scope on there uh, before we got something set up. I'll get to that in a second. But I put my scope on that before, and this little light wasn't even lighting up. And I pretty much had a flat line on the U-scope. Uh, very, very little bit of noise, very low voltage. Right now, this looks good. Very happy with the way this is here. Uh, but pin one of the DLC, as you see right here, goes to the splice pack JX2221. Should I say JX221? And this is how I found where that is. And that lives down here. There is a uh, splice pack comb. I went ahead and took this comb out. So that isolates the network. And uh, what we have here is a good pattern. Let me go ahead and turn the key off. Turn the key back to the run position. And you can see we have nice activity on our uh, data bus. Now let me see if I have any slack here. Kind of running running tight, trying to drop, dodge the raindrops and stuff, if you know what I mean. There you go. Take a look here. If I go ahead and add to this network this one pin that doesn't have anything in it, right now we have everything populated except for this corner pin right here, which is terminal A. I'm going to go ahead and add terminal A. You guys watch the scope as I add that. And we've got a little bit of uh, mischief going on here. As you see, we have that little pattern. And I didn't have it like that before. We have a wake-up signal coming through on our uh, low-speed network every now and then, and also a lot of mischief. So as I added that, what happened to our Prindle? Our Prindle went out, um, and we have a no-crank situation. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that pin out right here. Pull this pin back out, and look at our low speed network we're back alive our prindles back and the vehicle starts and runs so what does that uh, pin a go to we can take a look right at our diagram here pin a goes to the radio and the chime module so i'm willing to bet you that we've got ourselves a bad radio um don't know that for sure and i don't know if we have l or ul5 Let's go take a look at our, our uh, glove box here. It's a beautiful day in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, of course, right? Um, should be on this side over here. Do we have UL5? We do not have UL5, so we only have the... Uh, the radio here. Hmm. I don't know if we can fit any more stuff in here. Uh oh. I don't want them to lose their paperwork. This is too much junk. Okay. So, go ahead and smack this radio once. My hands are kind of hurting. I can't. Okay, the radio is on now. What happens if I add that back to the network? Let me go ahead and do that real quick. So you saw our network went crazy. Okay, so it still starts and runs. But I don't have a printle now. We may be chasing a multi-issue problem here. But for right now, we, we need to find out that unplugging the radio takes care of that one issue. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a complete vehicle DTC scan now that I have... Oh, let me get the radio off. Uh, now that I have uh, kind of isolated some of the situations here, we know for a fact that Terminal uh, A uh, on this... Uh, uh, splice pack is definitely an issue. All right, my Tech 2 win is not working. I bumped the cable, so I got to go ahead and start this again. I'm hit the power. Let's go find Tech 2 win. 
start this over again. This is a 2009 Chevrolet truck. It's a K body, four wheel drive, Silverado, vehicle control systems. This is a six liter K motor, uh, equal to or over 8,600 GVW. That's on a door sticker. This is without JL4, and this is a manual transfer case. So we're hoping we get in here and we can do a complete vehicle DTC scan and see uh, what all is going on. Not sure why this is taking so long. Oh, there we go. It's a six-speed automatic. Select one of the following transmissions. Well, they only give me one, so we're going to hit the enter button. And this is going to go to vehicle DTC information, DTC display. Now, the first time that I ran through this, I had no comm on anything on pin one. So um, we're going to see when we get down to, say, the cluster, the HVAC controls, um, whatever else. We'll see what's going on. This is a bare bones vehicle. It doesn't have a driver's door switch. This is manual windows, manual locks. It's a work truck. There we go. We have communication with our module, HVAC module on pin one. Yeah, before the uh, theft of front module wasn't communicating, all kinds of stuff. But I really think we have another issue. We've got to figure out why on the cluster uh, we still have this service battery charging system and the battery light. Maybe something else going on. I'm not 100% sure. But the beautiful thing is this is nice, uh, nice communication. We've got that back. Figured that out pretty quickly. I mean, not trying to toot my own horn because I get my tail handed me multiple times. But, you know, we're 15 minutes in. Uh, whatever uh, to, into this diagnosis I had a great uh, path going the AES wave uh, uh, kit here works out great for this type of situation if you got to do this type of testing and looking up here let me turn the light on you might be able to see somebody's been here before check this out there are little tags on the green wires people were uh, tagging this out so apparently somebody's been chasing another problem on this in the past so we're almost done with our scan here. This is taking forever and a day. Okay, so what do we have no communication with right now? Let me just go through these real quick. We don't have any of that, but here we go. Uh, we have our instrument clusters online. We got all kinds of stuff. Let's see what's, let's view all DTCs. Uh, past, failed current, lost communication with radio. Well, that's because I don't have it there. History, 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 history. History, failed current, lost communication radio, history, 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 lost communication, past. So at this point, I want to go into the powertrain control module. I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And we're going to go into the powertrain control module on this. And I want to just take a look at what codes I have. Um, I'm really curious about that charge indicator light. I don't like this battery light on here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Starter relay control circuit. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. It may clear with it running, may not. I'm going to double check. Let's go into data display. We'll go into, do they have electrical theft data? There we go. This will be where we're going to find if it's charging or not. It, I mean, this says 14 over on my little thing. Yeah, we're charging there. Um, let's see if there's anything about the alternator. It says, it says that's good. Why do we have a charge indicator on the dash? Let's go back to the cluster and see in the cluster. Oops. Do we have anything going on here? Might want to just leave that. Um, well, I mean, uh, you can maybe just pull that panel and disconnect the radio and see how it does tomorrow morning. Instrument cluster, I'm curious if there's anything here for the uh, display, you know, with that charging indicator. I don't know why that's on. Five codes, all right. That's history, 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 history. Let me try and clear those out. That might be another issue to look into. You want me to keep on going, or do you, I mean, what what do you? Um, yeah, let's give it just a few more minutes to see. So no codes. Um, I would be going probably on Identifix next. To take a look at that charging indicator light. Because um, I don't understand why 
why that is. That's just not making sense to me. Battery. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pursue this charging indicator here. I don't like the fact that that's on. So we're hopping into Identifix here. Log in. And we're going to see if we can find something real quick over here. As that's loading up, we're going to take, take a look under the hood. When I had uh, gotten here, this was a little loose. This uh, latch on the fuse block was not down all the way. I thought that might have been a problem. Um, we're just taking a look, see if we see anything going on. Anything major. Cables feel tight. Um, yep, they feel good. Running pretty smooth. Battery light, let's try that. I don't think we have any of that. Um, oops, I didn't mean to go all the way back. I keep on doing that. I want to hit scroll down further. What else we got? Aftermarket causing multiple issues. I didn't see anything aftermarket down there. Um, We don't have any code set, so I don't think this is going to be it. But we don't have that code. I don't feel comfortable about that. Hmm. Oh, check this out. Batteries run down. This thing was definitely dead when I got here. Um, disconnect the negative cable and reattach. I'm game for that. Why not? I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. All right, guys. I got my little 194 uh, jumper lead bulb I use all the time. I couldn't hold the camera and do both at the same time, but I got the negative cable loose. So that's undone there. And we just uh, jumpered that together for about 30 seconds or so. We're going to go ahead and put the cables back on and see by chance if, uh, if our problem solved. I'm very... Very interested to see what happens here if that charging indicator situation goes away. You never know sometimes, you know. Always always something to learn, something new to, to trip you up, right? Have a little fun. Go ahead and put this back on. There we go. Somebody's got all kinds of grease on that thing. I don't know why. We do all I'm not I'm not into the heavy greasing. I always get to the vehicles that have all that grease and goo all over the place and Usually not too happy with that. Usually not fixing anything in my opinion. All right, so let's go back. Gonna try and start this thing up and see if that charging indicator light is out. So we got, uh, watch our activity on our low speed bus. Boom, comes to life, beautiful. Waiting to see if the bulb check goes out and Let's see if that charging indicator right there goes out. Come on, go out, go out, go out. Hey, it went out. So uh, thank you, Identifix. That was very cool. That's all it was. Uh, always something with a hard reset. Some people call it battery disconnect, whatever. Short terminals together, that's fixed. I think we just need to get ourselves uh, this radio actually unplugged, let this thing sit overnight for the customer because they've said that uh, it would always act up at random times. And we'll see what happens. I'm starting to dodge the raindrops here. If you guys like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.